Very good. So welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Giuseppe Basile, also known as the FIB Stalker. Thanks for uh, joining in or for uh, watching this uh, this uh, show. This is the FIB Stalker, a street weekly show. It's 7 p.m. EST time in Toronto. And on Wednesday, you'll find always me uh, talking uh, um, and um, for those of you who know my uh, my work and the way this show is structured, uh, typically um, it's in two parts. In the first part, uh, I cover an educational piece, and in the second part, I do the current review of markets, and uh, usually we also uncover opportunities. Today is January 18, 2017, and I hope your uh, year has started as you had planned it and your training is going well. And um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start uh, and talk about uh, timing and price structure. What is that? This is step six of um, a series some I've started a few weeks back called the 10 steps to successful trading. And uh, every week I teach, I, uh, touch and teach one uh, one of the steps and so far we covered steps one to five uh, i'm gonna mm, i'm gonna do a brief preview and also kind of place this um uh, this series this step within the series as you know risk management is training job number one it's not about profits about risk management and um if you're watching the recording please stop it here and read the disclaimer here um, uh, what is important is that uh, the charts and the um, opportunities and the consideration I will make are uh, provided only for your general information I won't talk about myself uh, if you want to read more about myself you can look at the uh, uh, bio here and um, on the other hand, I'll, uh, I'll say that you can always reach me at fibstalker.gmail.com and this is my website, fibstalkertrading.com. Some research paper I, um, uh, I wrote in the past for the Italian and Canadian chapter of the um, International Federation of Tech Analysts and some of the organization I work with. All right, so let's start with uh, the, the educational piece here, step six of the 10 steps to successful trading. If you uh, like this material and you think it can be useful to others, please uh, feel free to link it on your social media. Um, also, if you uh, want to gather a, um, a free course uh, that illustrates how I use some of the models to model uh, the smart money, you can go to winningwithalgos.com slash start. So welcome to Fibstalker Trading, simple trading for all. So this series on the 10 uh, steps to successful trading, it's about your journey as a trader and the steps and who you have to become in order to become a successful trader. So it's learning trading is a, is a journey and it's uh, the journey is much, um, and, and it's much uh, about who you are um, as well as uh, what you're going to learn uh, in the process. Again, it's a process, so you will go from a place where you need to uh, learn more or you need to change some of your beliefs, behaviors, or you have to establish a routine. And uh, in the process, you will come to a, a better place again. You will need to establish or change your beliefs about how the market works, especially if you have a lot of experience with tech analysis, traditional tech analysis, uh, you might need to change a few things. It's important also to, um, to establish the right behaviors of what you have to do or must do and what you have to avoid. And uh, having a routine is also very, very important. It has to be established if you don't have it. And um, it's most it's very important you follow it with discipline. So trading is a business, not a job. Don't trade is a job because it is not. You cannot expect an income from trading. It's a business, so returns are variable depending on the opportunities. And that's the nature of every business. So also, there is no free money. Um, uh, you can uh, you can occasionally uh, have uh, uh, luck, but um, 
generally you don't force anything on the market and what you put in is what you take out typically the effort you put in analyzing the market it's what helps you generating results and so your results match uh, what you put in so think is a business i use this uh, model i like to use this model to um when I talk about business here on the upper uh, right side, there is um, there are actually the um, aspect of trading that are uh, related to the mechanics of trading. So psychology of the market, the method, uh, timing, money management, risk management. The larger part here is the psychology of the trader. That's 75, 80% of uh, uh, success. You can simplify it a lot uh, when you follow someone else, but you have to learn to trust uh, the methods and the uh, trading signals or um, uh, uh, setups that you receive. Uh, central to this model is considering trading as a business. Uh, trading is not a way to generate quick bucks or, um, or an income. And don't just try to make some money uh, when it comes to trading, but try to learn skills that will serve you for life. If you want to, if you want to make uh, quick bucks, uh, I have uh, friends uh, in Italy writing to me and saying, you know, I'm receiving a lot of emails of people are proposing me to invest in Forex. And I always have to explain it's not such a thing like an investment in Forex. Forex is trading because of uh, the smaller, uh, the small amounts um, that are uh, in play typically, which uh, require some use of leverage so risk management becomes uh, very very important and typically you don't keep position for a long time um, um, and, and swing trading uh, makes sense uh, does not make sense for weeks or months um, because of the size typical sizes of the um, of the portfolio so if you want to have uh, reasonable returns you have to trade often rather than uh, take large uh, position positions uh, that should never be um, uh, multiple of should, should, should always be taken in a way that your uh, your risk remains a small percentage of your account so if you don't learn the skills, you'll be depending on someone else. Uh, when that someone else is gone, you will keep. Uh, you will need to keep looking for uh, someone else that can help can help you, and so find keep looking for other people. And quality and consistency, uh, as you probably have or start learning now, it's um, it's very rare in this business. If you don't learn new skills, or at least you don't learn to uh, the discipline and the psychology to follow plans, eventually you will need to renounce to your dreams. And um, on the other hand, obtaining uh, consistent results is possible, and you can really dream big uh, in trading. Yet, because a lot of people do not choose to learn skills, what happens is that 95% of traders don't, don't learn skills and eventually they end up losing. So I presented the 10 steps. So let's look quickly what are the 10 steps. So far we covered understanding, understanding that uh, you are in a business and the way and the principles that the market um, um, subscribes to and you have to learn and know them. Risk management and the reality of trading, the fact that, uh, you know, without risk there are no uh, rewards uh, and uh, it's all about managing risk in the proper way. And you always have to expect the black zone, the, um, the event that nobody is expecting and we have to be prepared for that at all times. Step three is learning the mechanics of value trading edge, learning a method, a method that has a positive expectancy. Step four, it's learning to execute simple trading plans. And I'm always amazed of uh, how some people are not even able to follow simple instructions. And then obviously, you know, that's a big problem because if you have problems uh, following instructions, then you are likely have problems in following the right process to identify setups yourself and then follow your own setups. We also looked last week how we can use money management to reach objectives. And um, we reach objectives not by um, risking more, but, but the, uh, simply, but the, by risking more on only on part of the money, which is the OPM, the other people's money. And we presented um, a model called uh, market money layers. 
which can be used to reach objectives in treating. Today, you're going to talk about step six, which is um, uh, increasing returns with analysis and timing. Now, uh, we covered the step five, and we're going to cover uh, step six. Now, last week, we also mentioned that you can be successful but just mastering step one to step five. The point is you have to learn to execute trading plans and setups that someone else gives you. If you want to master um, the uh, analysis and you want to reach trading mastery, you will need to continue. Today we're going to talk about how we increase returns uh, with timing and price structure analysis. And uh, But there is more. Um, the use of trading system, uh, particularly traces that fits you and the way you trade and what you're interested in and the time and the time frames you want to trade and you're available for. Step eight is applying discipline and psychology. Step nine is using uh, measures of quality of trading or trading systems in order to improve. Someone said that you start improving only when you start measuring. And finally, uh, that helps you uh, developing developing step 10, which is mastery. Now mastery, it's not a point in time, but it's rather our, our uh, circular process that you keep, uh, you keep, um, and you keep improving your discipline psychology. You measure what you do, and you feedback in what you in what you do. As we mentioned last week, if you want to be a follower, if you want to follow someone else's signals or analysis, and just generate an income, what you have to do is to. Um, uh, is to fall is to actually master step one to five now as i mentioned before i do not recommend you just do this because if you have the opportunity and the will to learn skills then learn trading uh, and it takes uh, a little of, a little of effort but you will learn skills that will serve you forever on the other hand if you are, uh, if you want to put in the effort and you are determined to be a business owner a trading business owner then the steps six to ten or six to nine, and then keep working on your master. It's what you have to do. So today, we're gonna uh, cover uh, step six. Now, if you are a follower or you are not interested in delving more into trading and uh, you know becoming expert or uh, develop an understanding of step six to ten, and you just want to follow. I'll invite you to the winningwithalgos.com signals and uh, you can subscribe for uh, for one month uh, risk free. Let's look at step 6. Imagine imagine making 47 units of risk and gain or 100% in a month. Well, that's happened to uh, two uh, uh, different students I have. 47 air was generated in August 2016 and 100% on the account was generated in October 2016. So we've done it, uh, including, uh, as I mentioned, some of my students. So such results are definitely possible, and I'm going to show you today how it is possible to reach these results. The only way to reach them is to generate more uh, frequent opportunities and time those entries on smaller time frames. And later on, if you stay with me in the analysis of the market, I'm going to show you some of the uh, some some example of timing. On the larger time frames, but the same uh, concept apply to the smaller time frames. So, in uh, my FIBS Talking Analysis Coaching program, I teach a proprietary technique called FIBS Talking to, to do just that to time entries. And I'm going to explain very briefly here how uh, that works in a moment. What you can do, you can use this technique with trading signals, uh, string trades or with your uh, own price structure analysis, if you perform analysis and identify area of potential support or resistance, which are also uh, area where algos and smart money comes in, then you can start, you can, sorry, you can use the hip stalking timing with technique with that. The way I use it is to 
identify the uh, presence of algorithms on a smaller time frame so that I can use that uh, to identify confirmation level to enter trades. So what I'll do, uh, what I do, I um, study the sequence of measured moves, counter trend measured moves on the smaller time frame into an area of support or resistance, and I use the failure of that sequence as an indication to enter the trade. And I'm going to be a little bit more precise in a moment here. It is very easy to uh, it's very easy to use it, and it's step by step. It's procedure, so it's a timing technique, which is also a procedural technique, which is not heard very often in traditional technical analysis. It allows risk reductions by waiting for a stronger participation in the direction of the trade. So let's look at how it works. It's very simple. Let's imagine that we are at point D. So we, there, is a, there is a trend that has been established here. We went from A to B into C and then again into G. And now it is possible that this market is going to retrace. If this market is going to retrace, we are able with some models to identify um, to identify the potential area where uh, algorithms could come in. Uh, one of the models, for example, it's, um, um, it's identifying the 50% between C and D and time uh, the market uh, if and when price gets into the level. So what this timing really means? Well, what we do, we focus on the counter trend move here. We have the trend that is going up and the counter trend is going, uh, being counter trend is going down. So it's going the direction opposite the trend here. So the counter trend move in this case is the move D to E. So what happens there? Actually, if we believe, and I certainly do, the proof is in price, and if you uh, study my analysis, you uh, will easily be convinced. If, um, if you believe that in uh, major markets and high volume markets, there are algorithms that, and that, that, uh, that induce a sequence of measured moves on price, then it's very easy to imagine that in modern markets, these algorithms are also on the uh, smaller time frame. So, so there is this sequence that we see here, and what we believe is that there are also sequences in the counter trend. So sequences like this, and that's exactly what we do. We focus on the on the, um, the move counter trend move from D to E, which is what you see here on the screen, and then when price comes into an area that we have identified in advance, so when the it it's printed, we already know it is E. In fact, we trace, for example, from C to D, and we already know the fifty percent of the trace in this specific model. It's not always a 50%. Uh, it can be um, traced in a different way as well. But I want to focus on the concept of timing here for a moment. So we study the counter trend move D to E. And this uh, counter trend move on high volume market uh, shows the presence of agents of algorithms of smart money you can call as you want and there is a structure that can be identified very much using the same tools that we use to identify this level in the larger time frame so the point here is that if this is a trend and we anticipate a continuation higher. There has to be a fact or an indication that the, se the sequence here counter trend fails. And the, um, the explanation for that is that if there are agents, algorithms, smart money that comes into this area E in order to keep pushing price higher, so to to, to put an end to this counter trend, then this counter trend has somehow to fail, which means that this sequence has to fail. And uh, the technique allows the identification, uh, uh, clear ident identification of, um, of a confirmation level that we use to um, basically uh, confirm that uh, participation 
from the larger time frame here that is coming from Algos, uh, Osmar Mani uh, at E, is stronger than the participation of the shorts who want to keep short in this market well below the E point. So it's a kind of a balance of power here. There is a larger time frame coming in and a smaller time frame that um, keeps pushing this price lower in the counter trend move. Of course, for the market to move lower, we need to have people taking profits as well as people establishing on a smaller time frame new position lower. If that keeps happening, this market can also break this area. In that case, the trend, the larger trend can continue. Okay, so this is the whole idea of timing. Why timing is important is that, as you can see here, it uh, it actually moves the focus on the uh, on a on a smaller time frame. Let's say that this is a daily time frame, and I'll call this time frame, time frame T. The lower time frame where I do where I study this sequence is t minus one. In this case, it could be um, uh, four hour, but could also be a one hour time frame. So as you can see here, when I move from a uh, daily to a uh, uh, one hour time frame here. Uh, yeah, clearly, if we have the possibility to identify confirmation level, we also can work with the smaller pip risk, considering that uh, the market is not going to revisit the low that has, has been printed. And that's typically the case. Okay, after, but only after, we uh, price actually gets above this confirmation level. So that's the way at least in my in my way in my in the way I look at the market and and the reason why it is important is because it, it allows the reduction of the PIP risk here uh, which uh, which actually uh, reduction of PIP risk here at point A above point A um, or point X here so the distance X to E gives us the PIP risk or the tick risk um, and so we use this to get a confirmation and enter at the same time to control and make our PIP or dollar risk as small as possible, which would actually um, uh, offer us a bigger reward to risk, which is what, what do we want, what, what we want actually, okay? Price structure analysis, on the other hand, is the process that helps us discovering how algos are positioned in all time frames, and this helps us identifying and generating valid trading ideas. The trading ideas are then filtered through trading system, and I'm not going to talk briefly about trading system in the uh, next uh, step. Uh, seven next week. So to have an idea of how I structured the um, trading uh, process, uh, which includes the price structure analysis, which is this first uh, box here, uh, this gives you an idea. So we do, uh, first we do the analysis on all time frames. Uh, the output uh, gives us our initial idea of trading plans. The output also goes as an input to another sub process, which is price discovery. And price discovery is basically, while the price structure analysis helps us identifying how algos are positioned in all time frames, price discovery helps us understanding what can happen next given that positioning of algorithms. And when we apply price discovery now, we can go from trading plan ideas to validated trading plan ideas that actually take into account what we know about the way the market works, uh, what we know about how um, uh, smart money is positioned in the market. And when we put all that information together, now we have validated trading plans. We don't trade directly validated trading plan. What we want to do, we want to filter those trading plans to a set of simple trading systems, which filter out uh, the noise or the things that we know uh, that uh, we know not working with a high probability. So it's basically a three-step process, uh, uh, which is um, basically number one is uh, the defining, devising price structure, which means again how smart money and algorithms are positioned in all time frames. With that information, performing price discovery, which actually allows us to understand what is possible uh, to happen. And that gives us validated trading plans, but we only trade in the final trading plans, which are uh, 
basically the validated plants uh, filter through our trading system so that's the way you manage the trading process and you manage risk as well because when you apply this process you're also reducing risk and you're not doing that directly by uh, reducing your pip risk or or um, uh, lowering uh, your stop or making sure that your stop is not it you are doing it by uh, applying a process that allows you to identify only low um, uh, low risk high probability trades and that's um, uh, uh, and, and the quality of the setup is 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 uh, much better because you're following a strict uh, process here. Okay, so this uh, this basically concludes the um, the educational uh, on uh, step six of um, of our ten steps to successful trading. What we looked at, we do, we looked at two things: timing setups. How timing setups can help us increase the reward to risk, and the reason why we can increase that is because we get to work on a smaller time frame, and um, particularly when we use the risk stalking timing technique, we are able to identify confirmation level when price gets above for long or below for shorts those levels that's an indication that the smart money that is coming in uh, in this case at this e uh, area it's stronger than the smart money that is pushing on the smaller time frame the counter trend move so timing is very very key because it allows us to generate higher uh, return also in the size of 47 unit uh, of risk in one month 100 percent of the account and this has been uh, this has been done actually the uh, other point uh, and area we discussed uh, is the price structure analysis process and we also mentioned how this process uh, allows indirectly to reduce risk because by following a proven process and proven trading systems we can actually reduce the um, risk and uh, low, uh, and we can identify low risk setup, which have a high probability of it in the first target. Thanks for watching. Okay, next I'm going to review four markets, and I'll start here from the US dollar, Japanese yen, uh, and I will um, I will switch to uh, the um, trading platform here, and I show uh, this market which I have on the screen at the moment. Those who follow me uh, know that we've been we have been consistently uh, trading. Um, uh, this market, you will remember that in uh, in uh, um, in, uh, in January last year, we were able to identify this 50% uh, short here. There were a lot of people who were looking for this market uh, uh, at uh, one 120, but that. Um, Sorry, 130, but that never happened. This market went into the first and second target and continued in a sequence of measure move until it actually uh, met the 50% um, long here that you can see. This is traced from the lows in 2011 to the highs in 2015. And, and then we saw that uh, strength in the dollar index, and we're going to talk about the dollar index uh, later on as well. Particularly, I want to look at what could be the potential impacts on the euro dollar. But as the dollar index has accelerated higher, obviously uh, we have seen the US dollar Japanese yen moving higher. And now today, this market actually in the last uh, this week, this market came to test the 130.10, which is one of the areas we are looking for. Now, if this area holds, and uh, mind that there is also dump money here, uh, holding this price uh, weekly dump money, there is the potential for this market to keep moving into 120, 123, and believe it or not, the test in previous size at 125. Um, 45 okay so uh, this is an extension long there's no reason to believe that this could not happen in fact i believe and already positioned uh, for uh, for this uh, for this move here whether it's going to be from these levels or lower levels here uh, the low for of at the moment uh, i do not anticipate it to be retested but that could uh, happen of course anything can happen if this market continues in the coming weeks and the dollar index resumes to move higher, then we're going to see 
maybe in a few weeks and possibly uh, even 125. Look at how strongly this market has moved in six weeks. Um, you know, by the end of February, this market could actually reach um, uh, reach its target there. Okay, so this is the um, this is the um, the review for this market and. I want to also to uh, notice that um, uh, you know when we when we look at this market, uh, obviously the um, there was a, this this counter trend move, and I want to show exactly the same concept that I showed you uh, before uh, on the charts here this counter trend DE. So when we look at the chart here, the counter trend DE is exactly this one. And uh, and the way we model it uh, is that uh, we model it as a 50% retrace, it gets into the first target here. And then you can see that at this first target, there is a reaction right away. The market also moves lower and then it comes uh, and retraces again into another 50% should bring price into that first target and then as you can see here today we got the confirmation that the smart money on the long side it's um, stronger than the uh, dump money on the short side because what happened is that this market uh, the push that we have seen today was strong enough to break this sequence here uh, of moves and now uh, there is very high probability that this market is going to continue higher. It doesn't mean that it might not uh, correct. And in fact, this market could come back and trade uh, the 50% here, the, uh, one, um, the 114 area. And if that happens, that would be an opportunity to add to, uh, to this trade, okay? so. This is the this is the review for uh, the US dollar Japanese yen. We traded uh, this um, market today. If you wanna have similar or be able to take similar opportunities and get twice a week and analysis comes to winningwithaugustcom slash signals for uh, one free month. Thanks for watching. Okay, next I want to review the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. This is uh, another market. Actually, we have traded uh, today as well. I'm going to show you um, uh, what uh, we were uh, what we were looking for here. Uh, this market has um, I remove the uh, dump money here, and uh, this market uh, has traded. Uh, this market has traded the 50% retrace from uh, highs to lows here. And as you can see, it, there was a strong participation today, of course, this in response of the strength in the dollar index. So if this move lower uh, continues here, there is a potential for this market to get into uh, 76.15 here or 70. Um, 76 basically. Okay, so today we uh, took a short here and we hope to bring that price into that 76 in uh, in the coming uh, in the coming weeks. And when we look at the um, when we look at this uh, this market, we can always think in terms of sequence of measure move against that uh, area of resistance. So the area of resistance starts uh, exactly here, 50%, and it's an area, so it doesn't mean that uh, the market is going to reverse right at the 50% level. And then there is always a counter trend uh, move, in this case the counter trend move is higher, uh, and we get participation in the 6960 area, first and second target hit, and then uh, what happens here is that uh, the next measure move 
failed, but the market continued higher anyway into that second target. And it, it's there when profit taking came uh, from that measured move, right, that second target, then there was also participation on the uh, short side. So here the anticipation, and this is a risk-free trade now, the anticipation is that this market is going to continue and test at least the 50 percent here if not continue lower that's what we're gonna see what we're gonna what we are looking for and that's gonna depend also on what the dollar index is going to do there'll be resistance below price here so do not i do not anticipate this price to just uh, move lower like that. that that's possible it's not uh, impossible but uh, we have some support here so we're gonna see how this market will be probably this market is going to stop next around 70 80 or uh, just uh, just a little bit below that and we will see whether there will be any dump money trying to uh, capture this market so uh, this is it for um, today's review of the um, there's a view of the new Zealand dollar US dollar. Thanks for watching. Okay, next I'm going to review the dollar index. The dollar index uh, uh, is uh, trading uh, on an extension at the moment, which uh, resembles very much the situation that we have uh, for the US dollar uh, Japanese yen. So now uh, this price may not be uh, updated here for some reason, the daily price. Uh, but I will only show you here, I will show you the weekly, uh, the way, mm, the reason we came to this potential area of support and so far uh, has behaved as an area of support is that after the low here in uh, the end of April was printed, end of every last year, this market moved higher and then came to test a 50% level. Initially the, the testing was dirty, but then eventually uh, this market started respecting this area and that broke price into that first target and uh, second target as well. Now if we discount uh, the spike that we had during the electoral uh, vote in US, uh, there is an extension here, highs to highs and that's the area that we saw participation last week and then it dipped into that area this week uh, and today has closed at uh, 10, 133. So um, that's, uh, you know, that's above uh, current level. So that's um, delayed data. So it's not going, it's not being reported correctly here, but this is not important. What is important is to understand that dollar index has found participation on top of these um, uh, area here, which means that this market could now continue higher. And when we look at the uh, larger time frame, we uh, we see that we see that uh, above this price uh, there is uh, resistance at the moment. Uh, when I show you uh, more price here, uh, we actually see that um, uh, there is a 50% retrace from the high in 2001 to the lows in 2011 that shows exactly this 1630 and it's not the first time I mentioned this level I mentioned this level in the past it's still looming there and it also means that probably nothing is going to happen until uh, that price gets there and once it gets there uh, we will see that there will be participation or if smart money wants to allow uh, the dollar index to keep moving higher potentially into the uh, 130 um, level here and that would probably uh, mean the demise of the euro the end of the euro as a currency so we will see um, that's uh, if that's the case and um, and uh, so this uh, this behavior of the dollar index here is uh, encouraging when we look at the smaller time frame we can see that the actual uh, close uh, is not the one uh, reported uh, there it's uh, one oh, um, um, 
the open was 133 the uh, um the close is uh, 10129 which is near highs here so not like it is reported uh, in the daily so this is uh, it for uh, the dollar index and uh, thanks for watching last um, market i want to review here it's the pound australian dollar uh, the reason why i want to review this market is because we mentioned this market um, a couple of weeks ago and we completed um, we uh, we actually completed uh, uh, completed the trade uh, in this market and uh, i mentioned that trade um in uh, the show uh, two weeks ago i just want to uh, uh to um show here how we got to uh, our targets and um you know, we traded this in the trading signal room as well. There was a 50% retrace, participation at 202.60 uh, area here, first target and second target hit. Uh, see how nicely price was picked up, profit taking um, at this second target. And then what happened is, um, you know, we, uh, we traced this uh, next extension shorts and uh, we waited uh, patiently for this market not only to get into that area the 170 uh, 20 area here which is this um, this 50 percent short where the smart money was uh, was actually located and that's this level here but we also waited that dump money to make it a fat and gets out of the way at this point when dump money was out of the way that's where we could actually uh, short and we shorted this market and uh, the target was 160 uh, 660 uh, and the reason for that is because this was a, a counter trend or contrary um, extension here and uh, the market went much lower but uh, you know uh, I was uh, pretty happy with with that move was almost a five unit of risk so uh, this concludes here the review so what can happen next now we um, we will see whether this is going to be a double uh, bottom play or with the um, um, whether um, so whether the Australian dollar is going to be weaker or stronger than the pound if the dollar index resumes its move and in that case this could actually uh, also uh, kind of um, um, time here the um, the start of the recovery of the pound against the number of other kinds so we will see what will happen so this is it uh, for today thanks a lot for watching i hope this was interesting if you want to reach me or take place to the next coaching program the sixth edition in march you can come to fibstalkertraining.com or drop me an email at fibstalkertraining.com thank you very much and i wish you a great uh, evening and i'll see you next week wednesday the 20th January the 25th at 7 p.m. EST time in Toronto here on FS Street. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.